Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Vin. And I am really honored to be here. So five minutes. So in order to continue thriving, I think we know Manhattan must have livable neighborhoods, and retail is a big part of that. Um, and vast stretches where mom and pops once prevailed have disappeared from Clinton all the way up to the um, top of Manhattan in Inwood. So it's a booming commercial real estate market, we know that, and chain stores don't need to be profitable to afford their lease because the utility of the street level location may be higher as an advertisement than as a means to profitability more, to, to move more merchandise as profitable. So what I did on the west side under Mayor Bloomberg to his credit and Amanda Burden was to pass my Upper West Side Retail Zoning Initiative and the goal is ensuring a lively streetscape with ground floor locations for small businesses. And to do successfully depends on balancing the needs of individual neighborhoods. And I'd like to bring this retail, which means that banks get uh, a smaller percentage of the streetscape. Uh, drug stores and large stores get a smaller scape. Everybody is limited. And some of our neighborhoods need to be more space for retail, and we should think about opening up second floors of buildings. They are allowed under my proposal. In other neighborhoods, we need to ensure storefronts aren't warehoused for a larger big box tenant at the expense of existing small businesses. One size I know doesn't fit all, but we need to think creatively so that we can help preserve the multi-store character of our city and help more small businesses keep a storefront presence. Number one, and I want to say that Assemblymember Dove Hikend in the blogs today endorsed my idea. I couldn't believe it. Number two, um, New York City public schools should operate, in addition to being schools, as 24-7 food incubators to support restaurant, catering, and other food service entre entrepreneurs. We know that the public schools are used now 15% of capacity on student needs. And Andrew Lachey will say even less, and he'll talk maybe about his great ideas. In the summertime, they're sometimes completely vacant. Schools have the infrastructure. They're up and running, and they have secure maintenance systems. Some of them are already open 24-7. So we need to find ways to maximize these great resources to help small business, from tech startups to food entrepreneurs. Finding an affordable, fully equipped commercial kitchen to rent in Manhattan may be the greatest challenge for a food entrepreneur. Equipment for a very basic commercial kitchen can, kitchen can run 50,000 or more. Put in the plumbing, the electrical, the fire system, and you're up to half a million dollars. Plus, to legally sell any food product in the state, the Department of Agriculture and Markets must certify the producer for a 20-C commercial kitchen license. And for low margin products, a shared kitchen is the way to go. So my idea is to create a commercial commissary kitchen in every New York City public school that will be rented to entrepreneurs when not used for school needs. We need these food incubators and they often, the schools offer kitchen space and high quality equipment at a very reasonable price and they provide incredible opportunities for networking and refining operations. So food entrepreneurs pay, they would pay to use public school space, and the fees would go to maintaining the higher capacity kitchens. They could upgrade the kitchens for the schools, and they would employ a food scientist at each school who would help coordinate the work of the school cafeteria with the entrepreneurs, and they would advise as part of the package. There are suggestions that already take place. Kingsborough Community College does this. Real estate prices in Manhattan have pushed low-earning entrepreneurs into other boroughs. We need to keep them in Manhattan. So why not democratize access to food in places where there are entrepreneurial deserts? Another idea, number three, use the city-owned land under elevated roadways and viaducts to promote local entrepreneurs and small retail. We have lots of roadways and viaducts in New York City. The space under these elevated roadways and viaducts could be used for playgrounds and sports, and they are in some cases, under the West Side Highway, under the, uh, in East Harlem, the Urban Garden Center, La Marquetta, and, and they are in East Harlem below the Metro North Viaduct. And under the FDR, you can see a different story. Near Chinatown, the space is used for sports activities, and it is bustling. But below that in the FDR, it's a dead zone. There are a lot of dead zones. Use this dead space 
to build small business and startup communities and playgrounds and recreational areas. These, they could also be temporary markets under these viaducts to take advantage of the natural shelter against the elements. Under the FDR, we could have retail shops and they would create a flood wall. Chelsea Flea Market is looking to move and they could be up under the viaduct in East Harlem. Number four, reserve retail and office space within and around the new Penn Station for independent local businesses and entrepreneurs so that Penn Station becomes an innovation hub and startup station. MAS has been an amazing driver for the vision and design of the new Penn Station, regardless of what happens with the garden. They have about nine more years on their lease. We'll see what happens. We want to make sure that the commercial space within and surrounding the station and terminals is rented to small businesses and local entrepreneurs. Penn Station accommodates well over half a million people each day, and the number is growing. Small businesses in transportation hubs have been successful. Grand Central is an example. So Penn Station would give priority to those starting a brand new business, those with a single storefront elsewhere in NYC looking to add a second location. For those who successfully launched a small business serving a neighborhood, this is a great opportunity. As malls full of big chain stores around the city are dying, Penn Station would be a thriving center for small retail, micro businesses, and startups. Number five, this is funny. Upgrade regulations, I like this one, to allow the use of boats for low cost hotels and other types of commercial activities. And the reason I say this is I was very involved as a council member on the west side with the 79th Street Marina, trying to make sure that there were constant liveaboards, people who live there, and it's very hard given the Parks Department regulations uh, without getting into all the specifics. It's a shame that we don't have more continual liveaboards there. Then on the South Street Seaport, I'm not getting into all those issues, but the South Street Seaport, there is the Peking. So we thought we want to keep the Peking, keep a Peking, it has tall mass. It's a great location for a boat and great streetscape in terms of seeing it. However, it's very, very expensive to convert it to a hotel. So we have been trying to find ways to bring, um, I call them boat hotels, to the city of New York. So on the east side of Manhattan, much of the riverfront esplanade meets the water with a bulkhead instead of a natural edge. In areas where it is not feasible to convert the bulkhead into a natural edge, the city should allow for watercraft to moor to the bulkhead for commercial activity. These boats should be of quality design, not dinghies, and they, need, and they have to be seaworthy in case they need to move for weather conditions. This type of use is for short-term stays, although we could work on liveaboards. The city would extend power and sewer to the edge, and the boat owners would pay for those services on top of a mooring fee, which could help towards the maintenance of the esplanade itself, and we're all trying to make sure that it has self-sustaining possibilities. The boats would bring great activity to the esplanade and pay for essential services. Um, so those are my five ideas, and I am so excited to be here tonight. Thank you very much.